From the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. Bahamas Power and Delight Chairman Dr. Donovan Moxie has called for consumers to bear with the company following several recent power outages in New Providence, insisting the electricity provider is doing everything it can to improve the service. He insisted this was not due to load shedding amid consumer skepticism of the situation. Dr. Moxie spoke out after several communities experienced service disruptions on Sunday due to an issue at BPL's Blue Hills Power Station. Again, yesterday, some communities experienced a repeat of the day before with hours-long service interruptions. Yesterday, the BPL chairman told reporters that Sunday's power outage was caused by a disruption at one of BPL's substations, which in turn affected the electricity provider's entire transmission and distribution network. Dr. Moxie acknowledged Bahamians' frustrations and called for members of the public to bear with the company as it seeks to address those issues. Construction at the U.S. Embassy's new site on Shirley Street has stopped following suspected COVID-19 cases there, according to U.S. Embassy Public Affairs Officer Daniel Durazo. Mr. Durazo said before work on the site was halted, there were about 400 workers. He said officials do not expect the suspension will result in a significant delay to the project. He confirmed that of those people who have tested positive for COVID-19, none had yet received the COVID-19 vaccine. This comes as the country experiences yet another significant surge in COVID-19 cases, with 133 cases confirmed yesterday. Bahamas Christian Council President Bishop Delton Fernander said he was surprised a one-hour limit on religious services was implemented in the latest emergency powers orders, which took effect yesterday. He, along with Hope Center Pastor Carlos Reed, said the government cannot dictate what churches do. The latest order says that in New Providence, a worship service may be conducted daily for a maximum of one hour, provided it is limited to 33 percent of occupancy of the facility where it is being conducted. The restriction is part of a new series of measures announced last Friday. Public Hospitals Authority Managing Director Catherine Weish said officials are having to make makeshift arrangements to handle COVID-19 patients because every bed is full. She told the Tribune, quote, every bed is full. We have to work with an overflow. We are using the general practice clinic. We are at maximum capacity. We have to make makeshift arrangements to accommodate patients. What the public has to understand is this is something we can beat together. Follow international recommendations like vaccination, refrain from social gathering, exercise some caution. Young people, stop. Give us a break. We are tired. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis is expected to address the country at 8 p.m. tomorrow regarding the measures his administration will implement to curb the spread of COVID-19. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news... The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reversed course today on some masking guidelines, recommending that even vaccinated people return to wearing masks indoors in parts of the U.S. where the coronavirus is surging. Citing new information about the ability of the Delta variant to spread among vaccinated people, the CDC also recommended indoor masks for all teachers, staff, students, and visitors to schools, regardless of vaccination status. The new guidance follows recent decisions in Los Angeles and and St. Louis to revert to indoor mask mandates amid a spike in COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations that have been especially bad in the South. An explosion at an industrial park for chemical companies in Germany killed at least two people today, with 31 others injured and several still missing hours later. Fire officials who tested the air said there did not appear to be a danger for nearby residents after authorities initially urged people to shelter inside. The explosion at the waste management facility of the Shem Park site sent a large black cloud into the air. It took firefighters almost four hours to extinguish the fire that took hold after the explosion. The Tribune's AccuWeather update, a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A surface ridge of high pressure will build westward across the islands today, while an upper-level low near the southeast Bahamas supports some shower and thunderstorm activity over the area while shifting west. Boaters should remain vigilant due to the threat of water spout and or funnel cloud activity in or near heavy showers and thunderstorms. Swimmers and beachgoers in the southeast Bahamas should exercise caution due to the risk of rip currents 
currents along east and south coast beaches. Residents are advised to limit outdoor activities and to remain hydrated due to high heat indices in the triple digits. For all areas, it'll be partly to mostly sunny, hot, and humid, with isolated showers and thunderstorms possible this afternoon, becoming fair and warm tonight with a stray shower or two possible. Small craft operators in the southeast Bahamas should continue to exercise caution. Winds southeast to south at 10 to 15 knots in the northwest and central Bahamas and east to southeast at 15 to 20 knots in the southeast Bahamas. Seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean in the northwest and central Bahamas and 4 to 6 feet in the southeast Bahamas. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 92 degrees, a heat index of 104 and an overnight low temperature of 77. The sun will set this afternoon at 755 and will rise tomorrow morning at 636. That's news break. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper now on the streets or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.